Hello everybody, this is Sonia. Now I've come on here today because this is going to be part one of my series um, for my A to Z um, techniques for craft. Now most of it will be to do with, um, oh well we start now with A, whatever starts with A. We're going to do that today, right? So we're going to do something that starts with the letter A and that is applique, okay? So I've got a piece of a serviette thing like a napkin here that I purchased and I've tore that off there and I'm going to make each um, piece um, that size so I've got more of these and I will be doing that so all you do is just need to if you want to do this too we will when we are finished we will have um, something to make either a wall hanging or a cushion cover or something but there's going to be um, 26 episodes so it's up to you what you build out of you can keep them separate or you can put them all together okay now I've gonna I'm gonna be making all these before I'm going to put any of them up so I don't disappoint you because I always do seem to do that okay I've always got other things on my mind so when you do applique now there's lots of different ways okay but I want to just show you how to do it by hand and what sort of and different things to put like if you want to put this onto something you see or you got fabric um, I have a piece of lace that I just had in my hand a minute ago. You know how that happens again to me, yes? <laughs> okay, so we'll go with this next. So I wanted to do, I'm thinking about cutting out an apple. So I'm going to do an apple because I want to put him maybe on there. Right, I want to put the apple on. So what you need is a pitcher of some sort if you have got one because that's easy to do. Um, like I've got... A piece of fabric here with butterflies on it. See, could use them. Got a lot of fluff on it. I've been digging out in me um, in me um, cupboard here underneath me. I've got this nice um, bits on here. Look, see these pieces. All you need to do for this one is to just because there's not going to be any uh, ironing on fabric or anything like that. You won't have to iron or you won't have to use the sewing machine, okay? This is all done by hand. Now, this one here, um, we're going to cut out, but we're going to take him back not quite to the end because I'm going to show you different techniques um, of applique, different ways. So, I'm going to have to time myself and see how we go. So don't take it all off yet. I don't know whether I'm keen to do that with this one because I need something that's... Okay, so we're going to take it right back to the thing itself because um, I'll show you in a minute why. Because it's going to... The other way, I was going to needle... Turn it under with the needle and stitch it. And this one I will do with a stitch that is a blanket stitch. Now, you need um, a base, of course, for what you're going to put it on to. Now, I... When I'm showing you this, that doesn't mean you can't do this by actually putting some uh, ironing some freezer paper on there, or which is actually stuff that you buy out of, of the quilt from the quilting shop, not the freezer paper that's in the fridge at the supermarket. Okay, um, you can iron on that on the back of it, and then it'll line on to your fabric. I'll, just give me a second to chop around here, and I'll explain myself a bit better. I hope. Okay, so I'm gonna use the apple well I'll pick something reasonably easy I also have got this really nice pieces so any of them really nice pieces that you want to applique under anything and when you do slow stitching you can use these bits too that you want to cut out so I'll, we'll get back onto that anyway eventually somewhere down the track so we've got the apple right and you can input him on there some way I'm, I've got so you need fabric okay so you need all your fabrics and Mostly what we use for the best outcome is um, cotton or linen. You can use um, silk, uh, satin, uh, denim, any sort of fabric that's not going to be too hard to sew through. Don't use anything that's like the uh, rubber back curtaining things, you know, that you get. Um, this sort of thing here might be a little bit thick, you know, not the furnishing stuff too, too thick curtaining thin too thin <laughs> you can do it but you don't want to do it unless you've been doing it for a little while you see so you want to have to to take you know to do that so the circle I will use which is a reasonably not badly cut circle now you can go around here and you can draw 
You can get something that I've cut these out a long time ago, these circles, so therefore I have got no um, template. So you need a template for your circle and then you cut your circles out, okay? So on this one, I got nothing round. I need something round. I'm gonna I'm gonna eyeball this and you can too if you want to, but so you can go around the circle like this when you have got your template. Now you can either do two templates, one the size of the original circle and one that you're going to put this ring around here. That's not explaining that very well. I hope you can understand. We do two circles, one this, this size and one that size, whichever size you want it to be, right? It's up to you because this is going to be a different sort of how to applique. And this is what I mostly did when I first started, I think. Or was it the other one I'm going to show you? I don't know. But I've done lots of different different ways. And of course there's just a stab stitch way that you can just put on something too. If you want to just put something in, which we're going to be probably using for to put on the lace. Okay, now this is not actually going to all match up I don't think I probably should have thought about that but it doesn't really matter does it I just want to teach you the different ways of doing this now I've um, done this lots of times before this one so we're going to do our apple and I'm going to put the green light green around the apple which you can use embroidery thread which would be the best thing you can actually use um, sewing thread of course I like to use embroidery thread only for the reason being that you can get lots of different colors and it's not that dear so this will look all right won't it around there so we're going to use two strands I'll cut that off there with oh, do you think I get a pair of scissors it worked oh dear oh dear okay so now we're going to go around there with the blanket stitch right so this one here is mainly what you do all right so I've just got two threads that I just pulled it out of there and then you can just straighten that out like that okay oh did you see what I did <laughs> Okay, that just pulls back undone, okay? Now, a needle would be nice. You need something that's a reasonably long one, not too thick. You don't want anything too thick and heavy. Because you want to make the whole, you know, you've got you to follow your, your stitch through. And you need something that you're comfortable working with. It feels good in your hand when you, when you sew on. Nothing too thick, though, because it makes it a bit hard. You just need something reasonably fine, actually and um, longish. <laughs> it's not helping much is it? We'll try this one to start with as long as it's thicker than the piece of thread which that is way but that's what you need to be thicker than the thread to make the hole big enough as it goes through so your thread will follow through after after there okay. Now I've got this thing about wanting to do sewing again um, <laughs> now I'm going to do a knot in this because it, well, it needs to be so we're just going to applique this on which you've seen me do this stitch many times and I've got a really itchy nose because my hair's not tied up. I've brushed it, but I didn't tie it back, and it's driving me crazy. <coughs> I might have to cut my fringe, I think. Okay, so you just need to go down in there a little way in from the edge of the apple. Make sure you stick right to the edge, okay? And we just go around here like this, all right? Now, I only wanted to make these videos about half hour long. But I wanted to show you more than one way to do this. So I could get around here a little ways and then do the next bit. I'll just see how we go, eh? See how much I get done. Um, and I don't know how many times I've done this in my life. <laughs> but I really like it. I really do like it. I love to do sewing and stuff. And... I know a lot of the ladies do like to do junk journaling and that, but I'm a really big fan of this sort of thing too, so I want to try a bit of this for it. Now, if you don't want this to be obvious, which mine is because I need you to see what I'm doing, you can match the colour to the apple, okay? You want to make the same, exact same colour thread as your apple. Now, if you only got a small piece... Mine seems to be playing really well. It's sitting down really nice. I haven't had to pin it on, which I would do if I needed to, with the most tiniest pins. That these, pins these pins are considered to be applique pins, look. And they're very small. You can't even see, you can see how little that is, look. If see with my finger. I might just bring this down a bit so you can see this a bit better. 
bit closer up. There we go. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Now all I need to do is just give out the shot and that'll be <laughs> stay under the camera, Sonia. Okay, so if you hold it so you've got control, you need to probably tuck your fingers underneath there and don't stick the needle in it and hang on to it with your thumb and then just go around the outside doing this like this, okay? Um, you can do some really nice things with this sort of work. Uh, you can use one single thread too which would probably be it depends on what you're looking for. If you want it to be obvious that you've sewn it like this, if you want to have that effect you can. If you want to do it the same colour as the um, apple you won't be able to see it as much but that's okay. And make sure when you go around here that you pull that thread right so it's comfortable, you know. Don't pull it really tight or otherwise it'll all pucker up. Just very carefully pull it on your needle. And so you've got your um, it coming out fair near the edge of your apple. See how you got to go under there? If you're only going to do this slow at first and take your time and just practice, it will work really good, you know. Even if you make a mistake, it doesn't take very long to take the cotton out of the needle, fix that and thread it back in, okay? Because you can just pull it undone. Just take back what you need to if you don't think that the stitch is the right size. Because I don't know, mine aren't too bad, I suppose, <laughs> are they? Not too bad. Okay, so we're just going to go around here. I guess if this goes for as long as it does, it I just don't want to um, don't want them to be too long. But I want to show you how to do a few different things today, and whether I do it all on the same piece of um, fabric, I don't know because tomorrow there will be a different technique, and maybe I can put something that goes with this apple onto this one, okay? Uh, to do with whatever starts with beat. Well, did I say beading? Did I? Yes, maybe we'll do some beading. It won't be making necklaces or things like that. It'll actually be beading onto fabric. I will show you what I'm talking about. Here. This will be for the tomorrow's idea, okay? Beading. Okay, now. I suppose I should have surprised you, but anyway. <laughs> You're going to get your things together for tomorrow. Because this applique one I will... Oh. If you can just get some fabric. It doesn't matter if you haven't got a piece with a piece of picture on it. You want to just do a plain thing. Cut out yourself a circle, a heart, a square. Anything you like. When you try and When you're practicing things, it doesn't matter, you know. But like I said on the other video that I did, I'm making a lot of bits and I'm not putting them into anything. So I thought, well, this time I can do all these different ones and I'm going to have it this size, which is... So you can just get a piece of calico or a bit of linen, whatever you want, and I've got to have a size for you here somewhere. And look, I'm sitting on a ruler. Look at this. This is a ruler. <laughs> okay, so that's five inches square. All right? That's five inches square. So that's what you can start with. A five inch square and that's what we'll be working with okay so when we've done 26 pieces because we will I hope or close to that then you can either put it onto something use them all separate we haven't put them on pages put them on in anything you like you can do with them put them in a book for your references to, to for things to go back on to look back on if you need to get an idea because I find that that helps me because I have a lot of ideas <laughs> I just have them in some I put started doing a reference book a long time ago I got really full I didn't keep going with it I've just my reference is whatever's on YouTube I think that I've put up there which is really hard for me to find a lot of the things that I did because I have a real lot of stuff up there I hope you can see this what I'm doing oh dear Sonia You've done it again, you've done it again. Just get back under that camera, okay. 
Alright, you might have seen the beginning and the end of it, I guess. <laughs> okay, so you go down into your corners. If you've got any corners, just go down into there. Come up this way. Like that. And I'll move the little pin. I have a little box of them somewhere, but I've just found that little bloke this morning. He was in some things I was looking at. Okay, so we've got... So if you found a set of these um, napkin things in a second hand place or you had your own or when you felt like you could just upcycle them or something, um, on the corner I'll just come out there to that little bit sticking out there and I'll come around him so he'll be tidy. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you might not see it very well that bit but it'll be so down so it won't go anywhere okay so it's not that hard to put something down make sure that you've got it all straight as you're going you don't want it to pucker up maybe I should put that little pin back in there you can buy little quilters pins I think you can get little ones with little heads on them like, like these big ones here you've got these little pearly things on you can you can buy them if you want to if you really want to go and do a you know, a, make a bed cover or something out of all these <laughs> or something. Okay. Right. I will mostly, I'd say, be working with fabric and um, cottons, wool, all that sort of fibre stuff, you know, all the good things. Oh, well, papers do too. But I, um, other people are doing the paper. Um, style things um, you know so I thought I'd do this one actually I've been thinking about this for quite some time and I didn't know I think I told you it's about months back now that I thought I'd go on in to see how many things I could do before I got sick of it or, to, or I got something to stop me you know so I'm decided now I'm going to do do it first and then I'm going to put them up I'm not going to put them up until the whole series is finished okay so I've actually finished what I've been now I'm running, running right out of thread, so I've been doing the right thing. I've gone through to the back, and I'm just going to stitch through a few, few of these um, stitches, like that. And, and I'll just um, cut that off there. Okay, now I'm going to have to get some more, because I need a little tiny bit to finish around that bit. Now this has taken me a little bit of a while just to do this one, so our videos could be a little bit longer. Um, but I don't want to leave you sitting there with no idea what we're finishing up with, okay? I'm going to just take one strand off this time. I think this, I seem to have run into a bit of a problem here. I've got a bit of a knot. Alright, now I'm going to just have... <coughs> And I'm going to thread it through double, okay? Because I don't need a lot just to finish this. So I'm just going to thread that through there double, and it'll still work out the same way. So you still have two, you still have two strands to put to be going on with. I'll do a knot and come back under here. <clears throat> now this material that I'm using is really nice. Very, very soft, and oh, there's a little bit of um, I say, so, well, it is soft and it's, it's easy to sew through, and it will wrinkle if I squish it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna try not to. Got the iron sitting there, but that's a under real emergencies. That is sitting there under the tripod, waiting to see what happens next. Now, there's a little stem on there. And, and you're not going to see what that is, so I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to leave it, and then I'll come back and I'll put a bit of something else there. I might even stick that down with a bit of glue. I could. And if you wanted to, you could actually glue the centre of this to hold it, but I don't think I, I wouldn't do that myself because, and I'm telling you to, because it might make a mess it could be get bulky you know 
anything could happen. So I'm going to leave the little stem on the apple anyway for the time being. I might end up even cutting him off. So just end off that at the back. Just cut that off there. And that's how you got your bit of your first bit of applique going. Okay, so now I'm going to do something on another piece because I was going to use this for different techniques as well, but I don't think I, of course I've got this mauve, I'm not um, going to leave that on that bit, I'm going to go to the next piece. So this one here, we definitely want to put a pin in, I'm going to use one of these um, big ones, you can use your, um, you can use whichever sort you want, okay, like, <laughs> to, as long as you can hold it down. The ones with the round things, I tend to get me cotton cord on that. So this time we're going to be putting something underneath this, okay? So you'd sew that one on first, wouldn't you? Right? You'd sew this one on first because it's going under there. And I don't know if I've got another circle that's a different colour, have I? I should have had a bag of circles. What did I do with my bag of circles? Okay. I might, that would probably be the only thing I've put away for the... I, thought, I said that yesterday for the last six months. <laughs> I haven't put anything away at my table yet. I was going to do it. I've been going to do it. I said I was going to get the, my daughter to come out the day, but I decided not to because she had other things to do. And by the time she got here, I'd have been ready to go to bed. You know, well, not really, but <laughs> I do exaggerate, don't I? But I didn't want to um, be, be rushed into something. What, what did I do with them circles? Looks like I'm going to have to make one, doesn't it, now? There's, here's white, another white one. But I don't know if I want to... I suppose I could cut it small. I could cut it smaller. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I didn't just circle cut now, I think. If you've got dies that'll cut this out, that's good. Because you can just put them through your cutting machine. But otherwise we're just going to use something. Here we go, this'll do. We'll put the glue on here. Right. Okay. And we'll go around there like this, because that's where I'm going to cut it out at, okay? And then I'm going to have to um, do the inside one by eyeballing it. Eh. Now, this sort, this layered way, is, is good if you're doing, you know, something... Oh, I've got a cupboard full of stuff out there, or I have done over the years, but I... Just can't get it to you now. Okay, right. <laughs> um, maybe I've made these too big. I'll be here till the cows come home, whatever. I'm just going to do one and leave this open so I can show you the other one, okay? Right, oh, I'm here. <laughs> sorry about this, people. I'm so sorry. I'm going to just make a little line around here, okay? Just where I'm going to turn it under to. I'm going to turn that under there. Now, if you were doing a square, you could line it down. But I don't think I could do that with this. When I show you what I'm going to do, you'll understand why. Okay. Now, <clears throat> some people have the background there for you to stick to that. <clears throat> you put a circle, this size circle, on the background. This size circle on the background. I've never done that. I don't think I'm going to start today. So I'm just going to stick with what I'm doing. Stick to what you know, they say. You know, you're best off if you do. Um, an end. An end would be good for the orange piece, which I'm going to put... I think that's going to look all right. Yeah, because I'll end up putting... This sounds like something's going to fall down here. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's creaking. I'm leaning on it, though, so that's probably why. I'm only going to use one one strand. You're not going to be able to see this that much anyway, really. I have to use this because otherwise you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So because you're going to have this, maybe we should put the little one on the top of the, the pink one. How about the other purple one? So, yeah, we're going to put the little one on the top. So what we do is we turn this under here. So I had to pick the hardest shape ever, didn't I? You turn it under like that. I'll come through the back first. Oh, Sonia, you need to put a 
Now this this way I think is a little bit harder than what we just did. Just depends how patient you are. <laughs> it just depends. But there won't be any raw edges because you're just going to go around like this, okay? And you're going to make this into a circle. You want to pick up something at the back and come through to the top and you've got the most tiniest baby stitches. And if I was thinking, which I didn't think about this, but, well, I did because I wanted you to see what I was doing, I... Now I'm going to just do the long way. Do a long stitch underneath there. Go, go under the bottom and do a long st stitch and just come up in the side, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could iron this down, but I don't think I would do that. Wait a minute. I don't know if I've got the patience to do that. Come on. You dear little thing. Come on now, that's nice. There you go, keep going. I don't think we'll put it under, the other one under the top, underneath it somehow, because it's not going to be... I can go on top of it, but you just tuck this under here, right, at where your little line is that you went round. So there's a lot of ladies out there, I suppose, have been doing this for years, this sort of thing. I, um, like I said, I did a lot of this sort of work when I first started. I think the first thing I did was a jam jar and strawberries and I did it like this. It's not, um, it just depends how you're going, <laughs> you know, and the fabric that you've got to, you go into something that's really thin, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go where you want it to and hope that this will still be going into a circle when I get round to the other side of it. Okay. okay. And it's still going around. It looks pretty much like it is. The only thing is, it's not. Sorry about this. The only thing is, because I'm showing you in that colour, you can see it. And I'm not real keen on that, you see. So I'm going to just now change my colour, if that's okay. <laughs> I'll leave that, I suppose. Well, I've shown you that so you can see what the what that's going to be like, okay? You need just tiny little stitches and then under the back you've got those big ones. I did do one that where I picked up a bit to start with. Now, I want to get another piece of thread and I want it to be a bit lighter so I don't show up like that. I don't want it to show up really uh, dark. Where's, um, I forget that colour. <coughs> Right. Mauves on you. Always use the mauves, that's why I never got any. I suppose that wouldn't matter, that colour, because you've got the little dot in that colour. The only thing I've got mauve here is a bit of um there's a piece of that. Okay. Now, so I won't have to do another video on this on that on the applique part. <coughs> I think I might now start on a different piece because I want to um, show you more than one thing and because this is going for a long time I want to do a, a few different things <coughs> yeah, I'm not going too good here with the <coughs> with everything that's going on anyway so I want to show you how to do so you just keep going around in that and I'm going to actually take that out and use this colour here because it'll be a bit better than the orange but I, I put the orange but like I said I need to have something that I can do with this don't I I can't just have keep doing this <coughs> pieces and leave them laying around <coughs> I've got to stop all this choking too eh that's not doing me any favours right so now we're going to do a bit of lace you put how to put your lace down and your lace pieces see this is really um very very open and you're not going to glue anything like this I don't well you can but it doesn't really work that well if you you go to glue something um, like this is very very open now I've cut it so it looks wonky I'll put 
put this on another piece. <laughs> Yet another piece. Right. Okay. Just cut that and I'm going to tear it. Cut this off here. Now because there's a bit on here, I'm going to take advantage of that. Alright. And I'll add this piece of lace to, to this piece of fabric here. I'll applicate that on there for you. Okay. And I'll use this. I'll use this stuff here. Stuff. It is um, <laughs> embroidery thread. It doesn't matter what sort you use. You can buy cheaper ones, but oh well. You, you can get ones. It doesn't really matter unless you're doing something that you're putting in a competition or something. You don't need to worry about it as long as the quality of the thread's good. And this one is good. I buy it, buy it on. I've bought this online to do. Um, tassels and lots of other things with it but um, so I'm going to use it for this now now I've only got one th strand sorry I just stuck my finger in my mouth and wet my hand wet me. if I put this over here right on the edge or near the edge bring it back from the edge just in case I need the edge when you're putting something like this on get yourself a knot in the bottom now you just want to go over these pieces so you can, wait a minute, I've missed it, I've missed it. I've gone over that bit. Alright. Now I'm going to come over here further and still go around this piece. This is really easy. But you need to catch it down. You don't want to be, you go over the, the pieces, you don't want to be sewing in between the holes, you know, because that will miss it completely, won't it? You know, I mean... A lot of people might not have... This is for newbies more than anything because a lot of people, or anybody can, you know, learn from it, I suppose, don't understand how you would sew it on, you know, especially if it's very holy like this is. But you just go over and each one. Um, each one, well, each part where there's a gap. But don't make your stitches too far apart because you don't want it to be um, sitting up. Now, you can't see this because I've used the thread that goes well in the background as well as what the piece of lace is. And I'm going to come up the side here and just stick with this bit on the edge. And that'll go in really nicely. And see, if you wanted to leave the centre open, if you were making a pocket, you wouldn't um, sew all that all down, so you could just leave that open. If you're making a pocket in a lace book or something like that out of it, and you've got all this sewn so nothing will fall out the hole. You understand? Very good. I really like this. I seem to have some extra pieces of cotton in there that don't belong. Okay, everything's frilly around me. Rightio. Just doing a few stab stitches around the outside of this so we can do something else with it later on. Because if I go through the alphabet, I'm sure there's something that I can use in my different techniques that I show you. Okay, I think I might have to call this one a done one because I don't want to have to have too many um, pieces of it. I don't want it to fall into two, two or three bits because it does that after 50 something minutes but I don't think I've been in here that long at this. I don't know. I'm sure I'll find out when I go to look at it. So then you're back to the other side. Now I haven't actually put any sewing in the centre but through the journey of making this I'm sure we're going to end up with something on there. So then I can stitch that on in, on the centre, okay? So this would be a nice piece for a page if you wanted to keep the, the, the colours all muted down, you know, to paste the pale colours. If you're putting something in a journal, you could something decorate it, something like this. So that's all I'm going to do for now because I don't know. I think I looked at the clock and it said, I think I can still keep going. <laughs> I think, 
I think I can still keep going for another um, Tom, did I come in here? I don't know. I was fiddling around a bit after I did, because I was going to I was going to put one of these pieces on here too. But you know, I mean, that might have been enough. If you've seen me sew for a while, I, I could put that up there, couldn't I? That'd look really good. What do you reckon? So you get to applique that on there, and you would only do um, the top and the bottom of that. Okay. So we're going to make this bit as we go. So this is going to be really not hard at all. Just go along here like this and stitch that on. Okay. And now I've got to make them too big. Oh no, it's alright. I'm not going to worry about that one. It, see, you can see this now because it's on the pink. And I can't do that. The phone's ringing and I'm not answering it. I hope it's not too important because I can't be going out there while I'm doing this. Me and my husband made an agreement that we weren't going to do that <laughs> under the phone. It's probably a telemarketer, and if it's my daughter, well, that was here this morning, I'm sure she can ring me back. If it rings again, I know it's one of the kids because they know that we can't get to the phone that fast. And if it's one of the girls, it'll ring back. And if it's not, they'll just leave us a message. Okay. I'm going to put this across the top. So I'm actually making a patch using the applique because I had a sneaky piece of embroidery on there to start with. So this is how we use up all these bits and pieces eventually, I suppose, if we get to and make them. And I won't worry about going across the top just yet because I need more thread and I don't think you just want to watch me thread the needle. Now I've got, I've got a couple of pieces there that I can really see loud, but I'm not worried about that because... I've got lots of work now to still to do on all these. So these are your few little applique techniques and I will fix that and make it the same colour, okay? <laughs> you can't see it. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching and I hope you come back for B. Part 2 will be B. Thank you.